Hey, what's up? Derek Kirk here of Effectatron, and today I'm going to show you a real quick tutorial on how to create this like nice looking moss effect uh, and how to make it animate on if you want to, or how to make it look a little more organic and natural and really control where it is across your object, no matter what it is. As always, my tutorials are kind of, they're not just follow me, you know, do what I do. They're kind of like some trial and error. There's some experimentation, just to kind of get you ideas. I try to go beyond just teaching you exactly how to create the effect and try to get you thinking about what you can do with this knowledge and how you can apply it to what you want to do. And that's kind of the goal uh, always with my teaching and stuff. And if you like that style of stuff, definitely check out my Mind Emotion Primer, which is just like an intro to C4D and Redshift together from the get-go. Uh, it's just $50. Go ahead and check that out. And if you want to take the entire full course, which is like 100 plus videos and 70 projects and stuff, it's a 50% off sale right now. Uh, just 250 bucks to get all of that uh, if you want. Or just start with the primer, you know? If you want, if you're just getting into it, 2025 is the best year because C4D is including Redshift GPU with the subscription renewals this year. So there's never been a better time to learn Redshift because you're just, you're gonna have it if you use C4D. So if you wanna do that, check out the primer. Link for that below. And also this project file will be available on Patreon render ready to go uh, just to kind of help support uh, the people that support me. So thank you all so much. If you want that, definitely check that out as a link below as well. Thanks. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's start with just a dome light here. And we'll go inside the media here and we'll type in like HDRI and we'll grab this like default kind of, kind of, you know, it doesn't really matter, but we're gonna grab this one right here. It's kind of an outdoor scene, totally fine. So if you ever want your background to like kind of look better when you bring in a dome light for whatever reason, normally you're gonna be using the IPR anyway, but if you just want it to look better, just come in here to edit, go to preferences, go down to viewport hardware, and here you have a dome light resolution. And you can crank that up, but you're gonna need to crank it up above like, you know, I mean, 4K is probably like good enough, right? That's probably the nice balance point between optimizing speed and look. Um, obviously, the lower it is, the faster everything will bake. Uh, so that's fine. It won't affect render times, just working times, and it should be fine. So yeah, there you go. That's how you can fix that. So it looks a little less like you're working 10 years ago. <laughs> okay, so now after that, we're going to go to models, and we're going to type in rock. And we have all these really cool rocks that are locked behind the max on one paywall. But there is one free rock. There it is, rock number seven we get to we get to have. They have these cool like wall and foundation looking things. I guess they're trying to kind of compete with Quixel and Fab a little bit now that they, they kind of need to. Um, someone should. Here we go, we've got that. Boom, we'll bring that in there, boop, just like that. There's our rock. Uh, we can add a ground plane here just for the sake of anything. Yeah, and we'll go ahead and just center this, zero it out, boop, 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 cool. All right, cool. There's that. We'll take this other light that we created really quickly, and that's just kind of our backlight. Just kind of highlight that moss for us. There we go. Nothing too fancy, and we'll create a camera really quickly, and we'll switch it to like 85. Look inside of that. Zoom out a bit. We may not even need this ground. We can just we might just hide it for now, to be honest, just to take a look at this because it probably blends in pretty well here. Not too bad. Uh, if we want, we can make sure this is off for right now, the displacement in the geometry section, just so it renders faster. Cool. Okay, so for right now, you know, we'll take a look at this. Obviously, we have no moss or anything on it. So let's talk about how to grow moss across this and then control how to grow it across it uh, even more dynamically. All right, cool. So all we need to do is, again, stay in the models. And what I like to use for moss is grass. And the only grass that's available in... <laughs> The asset pack, the asset browser, you type in C-O-C-K, um, you know, obviously. Uh, grab that and right click, and say load. Bloop, puts all them in there, you can select them all. And we don't need the proxies because we're gonna be creating instances of them basically because we're gonna be using the matrix scatter. So we're gonna go ahead and grab just the full versions, control click those, pull those out and delete the proxies. Okay, proxies are just like, um, they save you time rendering and stuff. We could do a video on proxies. They're incredibly useful. Uh, if you guys want, let me know. But yeah, this is how we do it. Those textures will build in and everything. Okay, cool. We've got literally everything we need now to create this cool moss effect. So in order to do this, what we do is we create a matrix scatter, which we're going to use to make, you know, millions of these. And we're going to go in here to the matrix scatter, go to redshift objects, switch it from optimized spheres to custom objects. So now we can scan, scatter whatever we want across this. 
and we just drag these in or use a little color picker thing. Okay, once those are in, we're gonna go ahead and set that to random so that it doesn't like iterate from one grass to the next. It'll just be across all of them. And now you can kind of um, adjust the colors of this a little bit. I just think the yellow is a little not very mossy. It's okay to have maybe one of these be yellow, but we're just gonna open that up and adjust it a bit and just multiply it by sort of just a, a darker, like a kind of grayish green, just kind of desaturate it a little bit. And we'll do the same with this one, just because I don't want that yellow to really stand out. Sort of like that, boom. And we can make like some darker patches that way too. Cool, nice. All right, so what we could do now is we have that set, all the, everything's good. We're gonna go to object. We're gonna switch it from mode to object. It works exactly like a cloner object at this point. So we're gonna grab our rock, our A, AI exterior rock, you grab that and the size of this, we'll probably lower this down to like one. There we go. So we can actually kind of see where it's going and we can go ahead and say like 10,000. Boom. There we go. We've covered it all. What we do need to make sure we do is inside the transform, inside the rotation of the P, we need to say negative 90. And that's actually going to make them all face outward from the orientation of them because for whatever reason they always come in sideways because the axes on these things is crooked but just for the sake of example we'll go ahead and render view this and rather than do it in the ipr i'm gonna just dock it right here there we go and you can see we've got this crazy grass now it's way too big but you can kind of see already how this is going to work and so we're going to take this and just, all we have to do we can either scale these down or come in here to the redshift object, and we can actually just scale them all together with this scale multiplier and say like 0.1. That's going to really scale them down. Whoop. There we go. But you can see already how this is going to work. Uh, yeah, so we could probably go even smaller at 0.05. And yes, it just means we're going to need more. So we're going to add a zero to this. One million. That's 100,000. Just 100,000. There we go. And boom. Beautiful moss. Now let's talk about... And that looks really good, right? I, I was surprised. Like, it actually looks really nice. Uh, so, but it's too organic. I mean, sorry, it's too uniform right now. It needs to be more organic. A couple things we can do. We can add a random modifier to this. So go to Effector and go to Random Effector. Make sure that that does get added to this. And from the get-go, you can see that it's all affecting the position. We don't want to do that that much because these things are very small. So I'm going to say like 0.1 on the X and the Z. And for the Y, I actually want negative point, like negative one, just to see, because I actually want to kind of suck it in because I think the very bottom of the grass doesn't look the best. And we can make sure that that is sucking that in by going even further. And it's actually pushing it out when we go too far. So negative point five. Yeah. So it has to be before negative one. 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, just to give it a little bit of different differentiation. And then the rotation here, we definitely want that on. And we're going to start to kind of just rotate these. And you want to make sure that it's rotating in a way that makes sense. And so it's going to be the H, because otherwise everything's going to flip around and be all crooky. So we're going to say like 2% there to give it a little bit of organic rotation. And the same here, we'll say like negative 2 for that one. And then the scale, what we can do is it's a uniform scale. And we don't want to go crazy because then things are just going to get wild. I normally like to go negative before I go positive. And so what I'm going to do is go negative 0.5. And I don't want to go above one or anything. If I go to negative one, it's going to make those certain things invisible. But we're going to take a look at this and just see how this looks. You're going to need to refresh this. But there you go. So now you can see it's a little more organic looking across the top already which is nice. But what we can do now is create a new effector, a plane effector. And what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna use this one to actually control where the moss grows at all. So that one was applying the organic randomness to it. And we can change the, the side, the, you know, form of that basically by the effector and we can say random you could use noise turbulence whatever if you do noise you can actually like animate it so it'll like move and stuff which is an interesting idea but random is probably fine you can change the seed of that just so everything's not the same there you go cool anyway let's go back to our plane effector and you want to make sure again that the matrix scatter sees it which it doesn't so you want to make sure we grab that drag it in there 
Cool. And you can like mix these, uh, which is cool. You can mix the strength of them in there. So we're going to go to the plane defector. And all we need to do for this one is go to a scale, uniform scale. And we want to set it to negative one. And that's going to shrink everything down to zero. But we don't want it to shrink everything. We want it to only shrink a few things. So we're going to go into our fields here. And this is where we can control this with multiple ways. You can use a linear field if you want. And if you come in here and look at our linear field, let's go ahead and go to our above view, grab our linear field, and you can see how it's you know, a little big here. We can scale it down and rotate it. So, oops. Rotate that so it's 90 degrees up. And what we can do, you see, is if we like come back in here, we can animate it so it can grow on. If we wanted to grow from the bottom, you could do something like that. Ooh, where it's like, like gonna come up from the bottom or obviously flip it around and have it go the other way. So we could come in here and do this, but we probably, you know, this is just for an idea. So if you just wanted it to be kind of just on the, on the top like that, you can offset it a little bit. So it's like, oh, facing the water. If you're doing it on like a beach scene or something. There you go. So now it's just kind of doing that, but it's a little too linear so how do we fix that well you can do it in the remapping but it's actually the best to go down here to the contour inside of the remapping and what i like to do is i go to curve and inside the curve i grab the bottom and i pull it into about 0.4 ish and i grab the top and i pull that into about 0.5 and then i grab the top and i pull it down like that so you get like a very tiny little gradient up but you don't get these weird patches of just like speckly sparse moss so it's going to be the more of a hard cutoff Boom, like that. As you can see now, how you could just tell that to animate and grow on and just be like warm if you wanted to. Pretty cool. And again, you can use this across anything. It doesn't have to be moss. It could be, you could make up some weird, like a bunch of spheres that have a weird like fungus material on them and grow them across. Uh, very cool. And obviously if you don't think it's enough, you just pump in more, like add another zero here. Why not do a million? It'll be fine. It handles a million very well. It takes a little bit longer to render, but boom. That looks really cool. And so now you're like, okay, that's cool, but I want it to be like a little, I want the ramp part of it, but I want it to be kind of broken up and organic. Okay. Uh, so instead of this, what we can do is uh, instead of our plane effector, we can stack things together and mix them together. So what we can do now is add like a shader or a random field. And we'll just add like a random field on top of this. Boom. And what we can do with that is set it to like subtract. So if you want, you can like blend these together. Uh, we could add like a random field here. Set set to max. That's fine. It's going to affect it a little bit. But what we want to do is we're going to go in here to the remapping. And again, go down that contour curve. And set up the same kind of thing once again. Bring that down, slide that in. And you can see how that is. You can just like by pivoting this, you can really create just some nice kind of organic looks. We kind of want to make it a little hard cut off. And so now what you can do is just come in here to the field. You can adjust how much it is affecting it. So you can just kind of make it like sort of different if you want. And but we'll make it completely different so we can see this. Go down to the random field. Oops. Go down to the random field itself and you can adjust the noise type to turbulence if you want there we go uh, you can increase the scale or decrease the scale and make it smaller like so not too bad you could animate it growing on with this the exact same way uh, but yeah that's probably not too bad let's take a look at that Yeah, so there you can just make a rock look way better pretty quickly and easily and make a bunch of rocks. Like, I really only do this with the ones that are like up close in the shot. Um, other than that, you could probably get away with just throwing a texture on it. But if you want some in the foreground that look pretty good or like a piece, you can put it on whatever you want. It doesn't have to be a rock. Um, but yeah, that's how you can kind of give it this nice organic spread again with the random things inside of the matrix scatter itself to make the moss look better, which is just very tiny grass. Um, it also looks really good with ferns. Uh, if you have like some assets and stuff for quick, so try it out with all kinds of stuff because it looks pretty cool. 
The only thing I'll say is when you do use redshift displacement with it, if you crank that up too high, um, it'll just, it does displacement after and because the matrix scatter is using the geometry that exists, it's not going to adjust to that. So if you do need to use displacement, you need to do it inside of redshift, uh, not at render time. So you need to actually displace it. But sometimes it also just kind of helps to have that displacement kick on. And there you go. It just kind of add in another layer of variety to that. But that looks really good. Let's crank it up. Um, if you want to decide that your, you know, your original linear field is not that cool, we'll take, we'll take down some of the randomness just with this slider here. And maybe we take this and kind of slide it up so it grows a little further down like that, like that. And then again, it's taking longer because we do have displacement on now. So there, boom. Yeah. And so again, easily fix. Again, you just adjust the amount that, that is mixing. So we can cut that down all the way again. But you will need to refresh. It won't update that live, which is a bit of a bummer. But it is a million grass things. So, but yeah, it's not too bad with that patchiness there, honestly. But but, I mean, that looks pretty cool. So there you go. Obviously, you can play around with that. You can move the field around and stuff, which will adjust kind of how it looks if you want to bring it down more to where, like, just the edge was kind of crooked, you could. And again, bring another layer on top of that and really start fine-tuning and completely controlling it. You can animate it growing on. You do, like, a time lapse or something like that. But, yeah, overall, very simple, easy-to-do effect with some cool tips and tricks on just adjusting how things scatter on and everything so yeah i mean i think that looks pretty nice it's kind of cool it's not across the whole thing it looks decent all we gotta do is add a little bokeh on to our camera so that you know it blurs out the background for us there you go you know so now you've got your moss set up and you can come into the asset browser or whatever your product is and just grab your lotion or whatever put it on there of course the rock is extremely small if you're doing this for real, scale the rock up. Don't shrink your product down. Keep your products the right size. But for the sake of example, we're just going to shrink down our product and do what I say, not what I do. Okay. And yeah. So now you can kind of put that in a little bed of moss. Really zoom in on that. And have a nice little product shot there if you wanted to. Boop. Wow. Now it looks organic, right? Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you like these little tips and tricks, uh, please like and subscribe and let me know in the comments below what you guys want to see next. And yes, we're also going to do more Unreal Engine 5 stuff. I'm just still getting a good grip on it. And then eventually Octane, just haven't got there yet.